Well, good afternoon, Sioux Falls, and everybody else watching this month's edition of our listening and learning session. Uh, I am back at the Sioux Empire Fair. It's the 78th annual edition of the Sioux, uh, Sioux Empire Fair, and I, I don't know if it could be better weather, a better environment, so much fun, and we're gonna learn about not only the fair's impact on, on Sioux Falls, our great city, but also my gut says we're gonna learn about agriculture's impact on on Sioux Falls, these small towns, these ranchers, these farmers that are coming in from all over South Dakota, Iowa, uh, Minnesota, Nebraska, North Dakota. They're coming into Sioux Falls to the fair and impacting our city in, in a positive way. You know, I, I thought what a great way to kick off this uh, listening learning session then uh, bringing in the, the president, the CEO, uh, the, the top dog of the Sioux Empire Fair. His name is Scott Wick. He and his, uh, his bride, they have been working their tails off on behalf of uh, bringing this fair uh, back uh, as strong as it's ever been. And uh, they made great progress. But, but Scott, again, welcome to the listening learning session again. Glad you're here. You bet, thank you so much. You bet. Scott, coach us on kind of the ins and outs of, of the fair. Um, your relationship with the city, you know, what makes this thing go uh, in such a grand way? Well, I tell you what, it's uh, it's a whole it's a whole lot of aspects of uh, working with uh, the, you know the city. We work well with you guys. You guys have done a lot of things out here for us, and uh, the latest improvement was the the refurb of the bathrooms in the expo building. Oh, there. That got us from uh, the 50s into uh, into the new era, nice and clean and fresh. And of course, uh, the the county with their support, uh, getting some other things done. And then it's it's really uh, our sponsors and all those supporters and businesses that help us bring in uh, this carnival, the entertainment, uh, help us make all of our uh, agricultural shows, our horse shows, uh, you know, goats, sheep, and swine, make those shows uh, bigger and better all the time. We're always going after more sponsors for the ag division to really bring ag back to the top. Ag is a huge part of South Dakota, Minnehaha County. As you know, ag is still the number one yes. uh, business in the state at $29 billion a year. So I don't, we don't want anybody to lose focus on that. It's a, it's a hub and a center. And as you know, with the way sales tax is, I believe you can probably trace a large percentage of that back to the producers and those that are in the ag sector, uh, as they're not buying new equipment, they're not buying new cars, or they're watching what the markets are doing, and uh, and hopefully their prices are going to start heading north again. Scott, so how is the fair funded? Are you? Do you have to? Um basically cover your costs, your expenses with, yes, donations, uh, uh, some help maybe from the county, a little uh, support from the city, but not much. So is it really all these patrons that are coming into, from all over the, the state and around this area, are they the ones who are funding the fair? Yeah, that's correct. We do we do get some funding from the county, okay. um, but when it comes to the fair, it is uh, us building a package uh, and hoping that we get a lot of attendance for the 10 days. Um, we have uh, at $7 a person. takes a lot of people coming through here when we're bringing in the caliber entertainment we get. Uh, and no, then no, no, I'm going to stop you then. Seven bucks doesn't sound like money. What do you get for seven bucks at, at our fair? Once you get into the fairgrounds and you spent your seven dollars, all of the grandstand entertainment's free. Okay. So Fluffy the Comedian that was here last night, 12,000 people, normally that'd be a $50, $75 ticket. They got to see him for free. Well, uh, Sioux Falls, I mean, I mean, it's, it's almost unheard of. It was very scary. It was a great leap when we did it because I thought, how are we going to not sell tickets and make it work? But the community has supported it. They love coming out here. For $7, you get to experience things, see the horse shows, the cattle shows. you got the Discovery Barn down there. You can see 
pigs given birth. We had baby calves are born, chicks are hatched out. And it's, uh, we provide the experiences that you can pick and choose to do if you want to. So we have uh, seven nights of concerts and two days of PRCA rodeo, okay. plus all the other educational things that are happening that are out here. Uh, we had a 4-H rodeo the first two days of the, of the start of the fair, and then there'll be the PRCA the last uh, two days on Saturday and Sunday. The, the, the biggest draws for the fair I mean, when, when you and I were growing up, it was, you know, we came for uh, some, some Chislick, uh, uh, hanging out on, on the rides uh, uh, and doing, is that, what, what's the big draw now? Why would people still come to a, to a fair? You know, I think people still come to a fair because it's, uh, it's tradition. A lot of people that come out here, they're, especially in the egg sector, they come here and they show and then it's Turner County Fair and then the big show for the culmination of all the livestock in Huron. And there's people that come out just for the concerts. There's folks that come out and sit down and watch all the horse shows. A lot of it is just reconnecting and bringing their kids out and it's, it's, a, it's a family tradition to spend a day at the fair. Good. To go out and uh, eat some crazy food, some new things. We've got uh, rattlesnake nachos under the grandstand this year some of the best cheese curds and uh, some of the best uh, corn dogs in the country and as you can see we have a lot of food vendors um, and we, we pride ourselves in where we where we started to where we are now and uh, the Swim Empire Fair is a big deal it really is well, yeah okay what um, this is a listening and learning session in Sioux Falls so uh, Scott I gotta ask uh, a couple questions Number one, what is the number one selling food item at the Sioux Empire Fair? Uh, it's, it still is a corn dog. <laughs> yeah, yes. it's still a corn dog. I mean, we have a, we, we've got a couple specialty vendors that do some very good uh, smoked and uh, barbecued pork and okay. some ribs, but the corn dogs fly out of here. Okay. You know, when we got here, there was about 20 vendors doing corn dogs. Uh, some were doing frozen ones. So my vendor director and I narrowed it down to the ones that do the traditional batter, and now we have about six. So everybody does very well. We actually uh, slimmed down on a number of vendors. Um, so what we have is, I believe we have the best of the best in the circuit. Okay. Very proud of the, of the vendors that we have and what they've been able to do. Okay. Um, so now, uh, n number one food is the corn dog. Um, number one uh, entertainment show in your seven years. What's been the biggest one to date? I would say tied for for one was last night with Fluffy the Comedian Amazing. and so, Hunter yeah. Hayes. Hun oh, Hunter Hayes. So we get the young singer yep. uh, that, that everybody's uh, you know attracted to. But then last, we had a comedian yes. from where? Uh, he uh, lives in California. His uh, name is uh, Gabriel Iglesias, yes. and his, he goes as Fluffy. And I'll be honest, when, when I work with our talent buyers and they pitched me on this, I was terrified. <laughs> I said, I can't, I can't bring him in. Number one, I thought he was, was going to be very colorful. They said, no, he'll do a family show. Okay. And I'm thinking, how many people are going to show up for a, <laughs> guy named Fluffy. a guy named Fluffy doing a clean show? But I, I, that's why we partner with the best in the wow. business. And, you know, we partner with Romeo Entertainment. And also locally, I partner with Jared Johnson from Pepper Entertainment. Okay. And he handles some of our shows as well. So great local support, great uh, support from uh, Romeo down Nashville. I uh, took a leap of faith, and I bought him. And then uh, started watching some YouTube videos. Kind of got a little more confident in it. Yeah. But when they told me they were lining up at 11 o'clock in the morning yesterday, I'm like... <laughs> Wow, this might really happen. And they were lined up for the grandstand all the way oh out my. the south gate, oh my God. all the way out the north gate. In fact, well, I was getting a little nervous, <laughs> uh, but he put on one heck of a show. Uh, so one of the largest, maybe the largest show in Sioux Empire history uh, happened last night right. with uh, a comedian from California. And Scott, I had a city council meeting last night till 10. So I, I miss the, the show, you did but miss the show. I, I love it. I love it. Uh, so, um, again, give me some inside scoop on something that Sioux Falls would be amazed at if they only knew. Uh, give me something. You know, I really think that the majority of Sioux Falls doesn't know that we have over 90 events out here a year. Obviously, this is the biggest one in town. You're days. talking about the fairgrounds. The fairgrounds. Okay. 
Sioux Falls, 90 events are happening at the fairgrounds. It's not just the Sioux Empire Fair. Keep going. Yeah, I mean, we are the second largest event in the state okay. behind uh, Sturgis, which is going on right now. Okay. But as a fairgrounds in the property, we have over 90 events a year. We okay. see over 600,000 people a year, and we have an economic impact to Sioux Falls and the surrounding area between 37 and $40 million. Come here. Thank you. And we're, we're proud of that. We're proud to build that. We've got some new buildings out here with the Nordstrom building, the Discovery Barn. We've had weddings. Uh, we have church events. Uh, we've okay. the wedding receptions, class reunions, um, car shows, car sales, uh, national cattle and dog shows. So it's kind of a, a secret that we don't want to be a kept, sec yep. kept secret. We want people to know if you're having an event, give us a call. Okay, um, so, so okay, uh, I'm going to pitch the fairgrounds here a little bit. Um, so who do they call, Scott? Well, they call our office at our What's general line. It was 367-7178. And then there's also our website of www.sueempirefair.com. And we have uh, tabs on there that talk about the facilities. If you can, uh, you can fill out an online form and submit it to us. Yeah. We look at it and then we come back to you with a quote for your for your event. Because you, you can actually have a wedding reception at the fairgrounds. We've had several. Yeah, <laughs> people. We've had weddings in front of the front porch down there, I love and it. then they have the wedding reception up in the. Oh, excuse me, tipping over here, the Nordstrom <laughs> Johnson building, um, in the air conditioning. I love it. Uh, we have uh, a full liquor license for receptions. Yeah. We're partnered up with different caters that cater oh things God. in. So I, I really do. I, I, I've had people that have said I've lived here 40 years and I didn't know anything yeah. went on outside the fair. And uh, we don't we don't want to stay that way. We want to build and build and build and keep well, things going well, on. Well, speaking of that, and we're almost done. Hey, um, I have been the mayor now for seven, almost seven and a half years. And I probably made some people mad right out of the blocks. Uh, because I wanted to keep this fair not only here uh, in Sioux Falls, but I mean, I wanted to keep it right here at, at this fairground location, and I wanted it to grow. And I'm proud of you, Scott. I'm Thank proud you. of the leadership. I'm proud of the donors. I'm proud of the people that have come in to, to keep this thing going. And, and I love our partnership, uh, the city and the Sioux Empire Fair, uh, in terms of how we've you know, made our improvements too. Um, Sioux Falls, just to let you know, one of the things I did ask Scott to do, along with Jeff Schmidt, he's a liaison that we've now appointed to work with the people at the fair. Um, you know, I did say, all right, Scott, give me uh, kind of that, that top 10 list of things that we could do as a city to help you. Uh, and right out of the blocks, you know, there was kind of some pothole infested asphalt out here. There was dust and dirt and 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 just all kinds of muck and uh, one of the first things we did is we started to uh, uh, overlay a lot of that area with some with some asphalt and and yeah. I think it's made a, a, a big difference because I remember I started my campaign Scott uh, right over right there by there. the Kiwanis Sapenke pancake house yep. and it was dusty and dirty and hot and at times miserable uh, but now it's it's all covered with with nice asphalt and it's it's a good deal. Oh, huge improvements! I mean, you don't you don't want to be uh, dodging a, a, a course of potholes with your stroller when you come to the fair. You come to the fair to enjoy yourself. So yeah, the the amount of asphalt and overlaying. I mean, the west side of the expo building, uh, we, you guys did that in three phases. That's done. That's all very very nice parking. We had the Nordstrom Johnson building donated, and you guys have asphalted around that. Thank you. So the partnership. Um, has been, uh, we couldn't do it without you. I mean, we can't do it without the people who are uh, holding the fair in good favor. I mean, from sponsors, city, county, everybody, that's what keeps places like this going. These are like a great park system, school system. They're, uh, they're an attraction, something that gets people into Sioux Falls, to see Sioux Falls, have their event here, hopefully leave some cash behind, and uh, have a great experience and tell others about it that, hey, there's a there's another facility we can use. You know, we have concerts off season. We have hey, many hey, things. This is a not only an economic development generator, this is a quality of life win Definitely. for the people in Sioux Falls. I mean, um, young and old, rich or poor, black or white, they're looking for things to do uh, that will really improve that quality of life in the Sioux Empire Fair, the fairgrounds, uh, they have done that. So, hey, Scott, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much. My last fair with you as the mayor, and uh, right. I, I thank you for your leadership, your stewardship, 
uh, your, your long nights, uh, the risk taking, uh, you've made a difference. Proud of you, proud of your, your staff, proud of your bride, proud of your team. Thank you. Let's go. I'm going to go check out this fair right. uh, that you've built. And, and hey, maybe we should even go uh, check out a corn dog or two. Uh, let's go. All right, Sioux Falls. Hey, what a great way to kick off the listening and learning session with Scott Wick, the, the president, the CEO. But now uh, I'm with a, a gentleman that I met, what, how, how long ago? Two Here years at the ago. Two years ago at yeah. the fair. Mm -hmm. All right, tell a quick story. How, you know, what happened? How did we meet? And where did this take us? Uh, tell, tell us your name, introduce your okay. sister and your dad. Okay, so my name is Curtis MacArthur, and this is my sister, Courtney, Hello, and my Courtney. dad, John. Hello, John. And uh, how we met was we met <laughs> over there to go into the uh, expo building, and uh, my dad was like, say his name. So I did, and then you recognized me, and then you said, what I would, what, what would you like to do? And so then you came to my elementary school. In where? In Brandon, South Carolina. So uh, yeah, the yeah. mayor of Sioux Falls went to Brandon. Yeah. I love it. Lo <laughs> so how did it go? It went great. <laughs> I got a lot of privilege from a lot of my classmates. They're, they're awesome. They're like, man, how did you do it? Oh, I love it. Thank you. So yeah. what, are you, what are you eating here? Show the camera. Uh, what in the world is this? I'm eating a waffle sausage breakfast <laughs> meal. It's pretty good. Really healthy. Yeah. I had it last night after the concert from uh, uh, in Gabriel Iglesias. Yes. He was amazing. He's awesome. So wait, how old are you? I am 13 now. We'll 13. be turning 14. Okay. Uh, sister, did you come last night? Yeah. You did too? Yeah. Dad, yep. did you come last night? No. All right. So I got a 13-year-old and a... 21-year-old. 21-year-old. So there was a show last night. I guess Scott said that they took a big risk in bringing him here, yeah. but Scott said it was the biggest, potentially the biggest show in Sioux Empire Fair history. Yeah, it was. It, they said at the end it was 15,000 fans. Okay. Okay. Um, but, but it must have resonated with the younger generation. Is is that true? I believe so. Okay. All of his shows are on Netflix. So. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's That's pretty well known. That's how people know about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell us about the crowd last night. Was it, was it all young people or was it uh, kind of a mix? It was a really good mix. Okay. Yeah, I would say it was pretty even. Pretty even? Okay. Yeah. Now, but why did you come out? You were you were here last night till I heard eleven. Uh, twelve. <laughs> eleven or twelve. Now, why did you come back, Dad? Why are you here? I uh, came for the food, for the food. lunch. Yep. What's your favorite? The uh, I had the 4-H, the uh, 4-H uh, Super Dog. Yeah. So. Oh, I had what he had. <laughs> yeah. I had a hot dog, and this is my second meal. So. Yeah. Uh, the young boy is growing, as you can tell, and, and always hungry. But yeah, well, it's it's good food. I love it. It's amazing. I love it. I love it. Well, like I had that last night, and then after that, then I went over there right. to get the waffle. Well, hey, invite me back to your school. I've got eight months to go, and I'd love to I'd love to engage your people in Brandon too. Yep. Now I'm in the middle of school, so. All right. Yep. All right. All right. Well, pleasure. And now, where do you go to school? Southeast. Southeast Tech? Yep, for nursing. For nursing? Okay. Yep. So, um, in, tough question. You gonna you graduate when? I, May. In May? Yep. So, are you going to stick around the area? Yeah, I have a scholarship through my work. So, it's actually through the South Dakota State of Nursing. Yes. And so, they gave me $1,000 and I just stay where I'm at for a year okay. after. So, yeah. Are we, uh, as a young graduate, uh, is Sioux Falls, uh, is it a place that you'd be willing to stay? Is it meeting your, your quality of life object? Just be honest, you, and you, you don't have to tell tell me something I want to hear. Tell me something I need to hear. T tell me. Well, I think that Sioux Falls is a great place to start, especially if you're a nurse. There's a lot of places to go for that, and nursing is always needed, so really anywhere. But I would, I was planning to go into a smaller town somewhere, like Brandon and whatnot, so... Since I work in Brandon, I'll probably stay in Brandon, but Very good. yeah. Very good. I'll bet dad wants you to stay nearby. Yeah, that's his wish. Well, I, thanks so much for uh, letting me hang out with your, your family. Uh, enjoy the day. And hey, yeah, great awesome seeing you, my friend. See you again. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Take care. Yeah, you Scott had mentioned that he believes the number one selling food item at the fair is the corn dog. And so I said, Scott, all right, so where could I get some 
uh, input on corn dogs. Well, Richard Tallel uh, has been working here at the Sioux Empire Fair, bringing his corn dogs here for 30 years. So I think we found uh, a good person to ask some questions on the legend when it comes to corn dogs at the Sioux Empire Fair. Richard, Richard, welcome. Thank you. You bet. So, wh where are you from? I'm from uh, Fridley, Minnesota, in the Twin City area. Now, why coming? Why are you coming from Fridley to Sioux Falls for 33 years to, to our fair? Well, I do this for a living, and uh, it's just part of our route. We uh, we operate in the Twin City area for the first two months of the year, and then first part of August we come to Sioux Falls. Okay. We do this fair. We move on to Aberdeen and then we go to the South Dakota State Fair. How big is uh, this fair on your loop? Uh, is it in the top half? Uh, where's it at? Right now it's the number two fair I have. Ooh, uh, that's yeah. the answer we wanted. Yeah. The, so you're, you're, wait, you're doing a, how many, how many of these a year? Well, we're open from the first of June until um, Labor Day. But how many, how many cities are you going to? Well, in, in South Dakota, we're in three cities. Okay. Three cities. Mm -hmm. Well, I love it. Thank you. Um, um, let's, uh, it, this is a listening and learning session, so coach the people on, on Sioux Falls. Um, number one, is there a proper way to eat a corn dog? No, I don't think so. I've seen all different ways. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of funny to watch sometimes. You um, okay? Uh, in in Chicago. Uh, for example, they and say that that you better not put any ketchup on a on a hot dog. Uh, is there something? What's the most popular item that people put on a corn dog? Uh, it would be ketchup. It would be ketchup. Yeah. Okay. And and they have all different ways of doing it. I mean, we got these dipping cups, and then you'll pump a little ketchup in, then you'll a little mustard, go back to the ketchup, and then they'll stir it with their finger, and yeah, it's quite. It's funny to watch. <laughs> How many, uh, so what percentage of people put it in a little dipping cup and what percentage just like me put it on the, the corn dog? I would say it's it's probably getting to be 75% in a dipping cup oh, now. But come on, you're but, kidding me. But you can tell the the old fashioned ones that they, they want to put it right on the, I'll tell a lot of people, I said, we got these dipping cups and they go, oh no, <laughs> no that's, that's not the way to <laughs> do it. Outstanding, I love it. I love it. Well, the mayor is not going to put his in a dipping cup. Uh, I'll put uh, mustard is my my condiment of choice. Yeah, it is mine too. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. When great. when you're eating a corn dog, I think you got to have mustard. That's great. Yeah. So what, you just sell corn dogs? Well, I, yeah, I've got three corn dog stands here, and then my son has got the lemonade. Okay. Fresh squeezed lemonade. Well, I'm very good. Right next door. Very good. So uh, give, uh, again, listening and learning session, coach the people of Sioux Falls. Tell us something that would just shock us when it comes to uh, to corn dogs. What, what don't we know? How long do you, how long do you, uh, for example, uh, how long does a, does a, you take the dog, you put it in your handmade batter, how long does do you put it in the into the fryer? Oh, it, it well like a foot long corn dog uh, probably sits in there for four minutes. Four minutes. Okay. Yeah, regular sized corn dog two and a half minutes okay. to three minutes. And, and is there a special? How do you know when it's done? Uh, you just go by the uh, color of it. Okay. We try to get it a light golden brown. Sometimes they get a little darker, but there's not nothing wrong with it. Okay. You know. Talking corn dogs at the Sioux Empire Fair. Uh, is this heaven or what? I've got Peggy and Chris from Harrisburg. We're at the fair. It's great day here. Now, Peggy, Chris, uh, come on. It, you, are, you're not. You took the day off to come to the fair. What are you doing here? We are just having fun. And Chris brought her children and been out at all the great concerts. You got to take a day off to go to the fair. It's <laughs> great it. weather. It's super fun. So uh, there was a big show last night with a comedian. They said 12 to 15,000 people, uh, but you said you liked the concerts. What is your concert of choice at the fair? Well, I truly enjoyed Hairball. I always oh, do, gosh. but Gabriel was amazing. Oh, so you were there? I was there. I was there, and you couldn't even get into it. There was so many people. They had to open up a whole nother gate and it was phenomenal and he actually said it's the biggest crowd he's ever 
played in front. He says, because most other venues only have about 10,000. Yes. He says, so South Dakota, we're <laughs> number one. Woo! And I said, we're all there. <laughs> uh, I love it. I heard he also played a long, he played a couple extra sets. Yes, he did. He had a timer and that went off and he said, you know, there's no other place in the world that thought it come to in South Dakota and people would be giving me my own, you know, jokes at the end of the night. But everything else was brand new. It was just stories of him and his son came and just had a really, we're looking forward to having him back again. I mean... It was amazing. But uh, so hairball as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and love that. That's a uh, rock. That's a uh, classic. Cla oh, I love 80s. it. I love that yeah. too. Yeah. The 80s, yeah. our era. <laughs> so you uh, you also brought your family. I did, yeah. So they're running around somewhere enjoying the fair? Absolutely. They're hitting all the rides. And what's great, uh, in other places and bigger cities, there's huge lines. You walk right up here and you get on. So it was, it's fun for them. They get a lot in. So You get your money's worth. Absolutely, yeah. Love it. Um, um, you must feel it's a pretty safe place. Oh, yeah, and clean. <laughs> Let me just say, very clean, yeah. Comparatively speaking, yes. absolutely, yeah. No, I, I South Dakota is a place to be, yeah. This is, we look forward to it every year, so. Can I ask you, uh, um, how's, how's Harrisburg doing? Uh, it, I mean, that's a, we, we, it certainly is a suburb of Sioux Falls, but we need Harrisburg to do well, uh, just as much as we need Sioux Falls to do well. We are you know, brother, brother, or brother, sister, or sister, sister, city, that's for sure. How was Harrisburg doing? Well, we moved there in kindergarten and first grade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we went kindergarten through 12th grade, or first grade through 12th yeah. grade, okay. and then moved away, went in the military, came back, and uh, it's huge, and yeah. so, it's good. I, yep, I'm back trying to get the community going, and it's growing. I mean, yes. we've got the big gyms there now and the big uh, gym and county fair coming. Absolutely. County fair's coming yes very so excited about that yeah. do you work in Sioux Falls um I teach actually I teach in Del thank Rapids thank you I teach Zumba in Harrisburg so very good well thank you thank you well I love it sorry I, I just kind of grabbed you it's, That's okay. it's their day off the mayor <laughs> grabs them oh okay. my you gotta check out the rattlesnake there's rattlesnake brats here and alligator Ooh. brats <laughs> we we've, we've heard How about that We've, we heard good. about it. We'll go, we've got to check that out. Yeah. Rattlesnake brats. Rattlesnake brats. And it's just down the. There's the, one right down there, and there's one underneath. Okay. The okay. Stage. So very good. His name's Grandpa and Bonnie that are there. Grandpa and Bonnie. This South Dakota nice is so real. It is. You met Grandpa and Bonnie. Where are they from? Um, I can't remember. Sorry about that one. Yeah. Um, but you met her. They're new this year. That's they're new. why, you know, I, you know, you, cite, you seek out the ones that are new each year. And that's a very unique and great family, you know, just very personable. He's out talking to the people. Okay. And, and I've talked to several other vendors that said that they were at several other uh, fairs and that they're excited to come back to this one because of the security piece, yes. the cleanliness. And the fact that the people are so nice. So, hey. South Dakota Nice, we love it. Thank you so much. Thank so, you. Are, any more concerts this week? Yes, there's. I mean, that you're going to? No, that I'm going to. Um, No, not that I know okay. them, but. Well, Thanks for uh, being you here bet. in Sioux Falls. Right, thank you. Okay. Enjoy your day off. Yep. Okay, thank you. thank you. You know, we met uh, Scott Wick uh, to kick off this listening and learning program. Uh, we're at the Sioux Empire Fairgrounds, and certainly it takes leadership of all kinds to, to make things go. Uh, some are paid, some are unpaid. Uh, they're all leaders, they're all stewards. And I do want to introduce you, Sioux Falls, to one of the stewards uh, who's on the board of the Sioux Empire Fair, uh, and that is Steve Monk. And, and Stephen, thank you for your service. Thanks for your stewardship. We don't pay you much to do this, do we? We don't, but the rewards is when we have Fair Week uh, and we see all the people come out and just all the experiences that they are able to gain and, and have here and memories. How, how long have you been on the board? Oh, I, it's, it's hard to say because I was also a representative for the Extension Office when I worked at the Extension Office. Somewhere in that 25 plus years, uh, we've had some way, shape and form been involved with the fair and the fair grounds itself. So, you know, where are we at on your 25-year journey with, uh, with the fair? Is, is this uh, the best yet? Uh, do we, uh, have, are we where we want to? Where, tell us where we, 
where we've come, where we want to go. Yeah, well, we've made some real progress. Uh, we went from a, a shorter fare to a 10-day fare, and that was a huge step there, and we were able to accommodate all that needs to, and resources that are required for that extended fare, and it's, it turned out very successful uh, so far. And we're doing capital improvements all along. Yes. One of the real assets that, that I've seen over that period of time was really the cooperation that we've got with the city as well now working with us as long, along with the county and just that, that partnership to bring it to where these facilities provide a lot of use, not only fair week, but throughout the entire year where the city uses it for many uh, training exercises and resources that people probably aren't aware of. Well, this is a listening and learning session, Scott. So coach the people of Sioux Falls on some of those uh, uh, things that are going on behind the scenes that they'd have no clue about, such as the training. Well, we've got a lot of training that takes place here, either with the police department, uh, search and rescue dogs. We also have the fire department that comes out. They do the training as far as new officers and driving and how to pull people over. Uh, I mentioned the search and rescue. The safety village is out here as well and all the programming that is associated with that. So it's just an outstanding, and those are regular yes. going on. And then in between that, we have special groups that may come in related to those entities or those agencies. Very good. Yes. Very good. Um, um, we're trying to give us kind of some hidden gems, uh, hidden insight uh, to the people watching the program. What is something that... Uh, the people of Sioux Falls would have no clue about when it comes to the to the fair. The fair itself or the fairgrounds? Fair itself? Well, Either one, fairgrounds or the fair. Well, let's say the fair itself. And the, the, the other addition that we've had the last couple of years is the Discovery Barn. Mm -hmm. For those that have been a, a generation or two away from actual production of food and fiber, yes. here's an excellent way to see how that happens. Uh, where pigs are born, calves are born, and they see that whole life process that takes place on the farms. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, uh, Stephen, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. No, great so, job. Uh, love the hat. Love thank the, you. Look, and, and enjoy the fair. Yeah. And thanks for your leadership, buddy. Thank you. you, thank you. All right, Sioux Falls. Uh, I'm having fun. I don't know about you, but I'm having a blast at this year or this month's listening and learning session here at the fair and. And, you know, in South Dakota, there's those times where we would prefer that it not be hot, uh, not be humid. Uh, but there's one guy who I'll bet likes it when it's hot and humid. Uh, and that's, and that's Boreon. Uh, and, and Boreon, he's got a lemonade stand and more here at the fair. Um, so tell us about uh, the fair, how lemonade impacts it. And uh, you know how did you get how did you get into this? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I own the Boca Gelato at the mall, the Empire Mall. Yes. And so we started uh, last year with this. We had a really great success. And then we also this year we added a lemonade stand. Actually, we have three of them, and it's all fresh squeezed. There's no chemicals. There's no powders, and people absolutely love it. And it's a really great tasting lemonade. And then we have these refill bottles, so it's environmentally friendly. They can come in and get five drinks. So they got four free refills with that. So we're saving on cups as well with that. And the people absolutely love it. it's a nice bottle so you you get uh, all right all right hey yeah yeah and uh, uh, you get, he's, uh, he's also got some sales guy in him no, as no, you no, can no. tell I as do I as yeah. do I Boran thank you but uh, uh, so w what is what is in in um, lemonade is got to be a big deal I mean it, it's kind of that old-fashioned drink Yes. People enjoy it, and yes. and you're giving free refills, so that's yeah. good. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. What it is, it's great for fair. Obviously, if it's hot, or if it's a little bit cool too, it's a, such a great refreshing drink. Uh, and you know, like I said, not using the, any powders and that. People, it's really you know cools you down. It kind of gives you that, that fair mood with the rides, with all the food. It's a great complimentary. It can go almost with any many foods together. So. And and I tell you, uh, today's generation, they want it fresh. They don't want the chemicals. They don't want. So it sounds like you're you're meeting their need yeah. and probably grandma and grandpa too. Yeah, oh definitely, definitely, yeah. Same thing, yeah, with our gelato as well, so freshly made as well. That's kind of our motto, kind of doing everything, even at the fair, even in this lot of like greasy stuff that we want to offer people because people absolutely love that. And when you when you taste it, you, you can really taste the difference. So yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I have to be yeah. brutally honest, Sioux Falls. Uh, I actually love the greasy stuff. <laughs> so uh, and and I yeah, I hear there's this. Uh, a snake, uh, is it a snake, what was it, a snake brat or something like that? 
We're going to be on the lookout for that snake broad here at the fair. Yeah. Borean, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. Right. I appreciate it. Great yeah. mayor, and he's amazing. <laughs> Two Falls. We are so grateful to have a great mayor like this. So. You're very kind. Thank, thank you, you, buddy. Thank, thank, you, thank you. you. Here at the fair, I met Bill, who's a citizen of Sioux Falls, and, and Bill told me that normally he's uh, uh, maybe at, in, in the Sturgis Rally at this time, and now he's hanging out at the fair, Bill. Uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. I'm going to ask you, uh, certainly you probably had a little life change here, a lot of life change here. Um, tell me, uh, in, in all honesty, how is Sioux Falls, uh, in terms of a community, in, in, um, when, you, when you do have uh, such a, a, a more challenging life situation like you've been faced with, Bill? Oh, it's, I mean, it's pretty easy to get around and stuff. I mean, all the, I'm down here, and doctor's appointments and all that stuff are all pretty available and everything, so. Bill, do you uh, take um, uh, uh, public transportation? Uh, do you, how does that work in? I usually have quite a few friends around that'll give me a ride to wherever I need to go and stuff so how long you been in Sioux Falls I've been raised up here and stuff I was living up Millbank for a while and then when this all started around Thanksgiving time I've been staying down here at my folks's place okay so I've been going to the doctor every week and a couple times a week sometimes you know it just saves on travel and stuff yeah. like that so well we're glad you're here Bill uh, glad you're here and and uh, strong man uh, I, I, you're going to do well. Um, uh, Bill, I'm sorry? <laughs> That's what I hear. Just yeah. got to keep positive and it'll all come out in the end. So, Thank you. Well, the fair, how has the fair been uh, today? Uh, is, it, is it fairly accessible for the most part? I get around pretty good here. I'm able to get up to everything. And, and I used to come here all the time when I was younger and lived down here. And, Still, a pretty good place to go. Pretty good. Can I, how, how's Millbank doing? Yeah, that's they're kind of holding their own, I guess. I mean, it's their population-wise, I think it's going down somewhat. It's like any small town. I think there's a lot of the kids that are leaving, and my most of my kids are gone from there too, and okay. living down here. Oh, so your kids are now in Sioux Falls. Yeah. Oh, great. And I'm back down here too, so. My son-in-law's on the fire department here, and my daughter teaches down Parker. And oh, great. great. So your son-in-law is a firefighter in Sioux Falls? Hey, I love it. I love it. Five years. <laughs> so he was... That's, that's great. I was on the volunteer department up in Millbank, and he was on there for a while. He lived up there for a while. That's while him and my daughter met. And uh, <clears throat> so they got married, and then they moved around a little bit and ended up down here. And Good. And so Sioux Falls hired him. Yep. <laughs> right. Well, Bill, thank you so much. Uh, we're, we're glad you're here in Sioux Falls. Um, I wish you all the very, very best. And uh, uh, if there are things that we can do to improve uh, while you're here or as you're living here, um, we, we need to do that too. So let us know uh, in, in the mayor's office or wherever. But, Bill, uh, bless you. Sioux Falls, I've got Bonnie and George. Uh, this is mom and son. They're from Rapid City, and they're here in, uh, they're, you're on the east side now, George. We over here, man. The Sioux Empire Fair has been great to us. It's our first year here. We applied. Mark got us in here, and uh, we just love love having us here and uh, enjoying all these exotic brats and sausages that we do. Well, talking about exotic, like, come on, rattlesnake brats. Bonnie. Alligator. <laughs> we have alligator, rattlesnake, spicy elk, you name it. Come on out and try it. All right. You'll uh, George, did you shoot the rattlesnake or, or how do you get the rattlesnake? Uh, no, my grandparents used to do it, but there comes a point where, you know, they're getting older that now we have to do it. We uh, do the alligator hunting ourselves. <laughs> no, we don't. So you, you, where, where do you find alligator in South Dakota? We source, all, we source all of our meat regionally. So our alligator comes from Louisiana. There's a big farm there. Right. So we get it there. And then we get all of our stuff, like our rattlesnake sausage comes from Texas during the roundup season. Makes sense. Who falls? And then we get the buffalo here in South Dakota. Okay. We get that. We get the, uh, the elk sausage out of Colorado. There's a big farm there. And then it's all made for us, and then we buy it all back, and then we travel about eight months a year in our food truck, and we just this is how we make our living. I, uh, George, uh, Body, this is uh, it's the listening and learning session. I do this um, 
uh, I started it when I was running for mayor almost eight years ago, and now I, I do it every month. And so we're trying to learn, uh, as well as uh, coach not only the mayor, but the people of Sioux Falls about stuff that are happening in our town. And, and now, now you're coaching us on rattlesnake brats. That's one of our top sellers. Everybody needs to come out to the Sioux Empire Fair and try the rattlesnake or the alligator brats and come see us out here. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay. So, um, uh, how is uh, we are we're one big state, uh, and we need each other to do well. Um, you know, there's always been this uh, kind of I don't know tension between East River, West River. You know, all that stuff. Um, we do need Rapid City to do well. How is Rapid doing? Rapid's good. Rapid's good. We actually go ba go back over there right after this and do the Central States Fair. Okay. So the Rapid City's good. We enjoy being there. Okay. Bonnie? It's fourth year doing Central States Fair, and it's very well. Bonnie, where are you from originally? Colorado originally. Okay. We've been in Rapid City seven years, Okay. and we love doing what we're doing. I used to work for Walmart, but I got to retire from okay. Walmart and help my son with the food cart. Okay. And I heard, uh, your, is it your husband? That's, uh, Grandpa, is that his name? Grandpa. Yeah, he's out here talking to everybody. <laughs> Just like the dang mayor. Uh, uh, We're spending our money here. We've seen the airbrush guy, and we had a T-shirt done that said, Lawrence Welk still lives and rules. And we got a picture of him on with his T-shirt with Lawrence Welk on it. I don't know if people would know what that is. But I, I do. I grew up with it, so I can see me sitting in my grandma's living room watching Lawrence Walk on on Sundays. Yep, that's kind of how it was. It, my father still watches it on Sundays. Um, <laughs> he watches Lawrence Walk. <laughs> I can still remember it. Yeah. Uh, grandma's chair, my my mom here, and and the kids kind of on the floor watching Lawrence Walk. I love it. Yeah. Remember? Uh, do you uh, do you remember Sherwin Linton? I do. He was right back here on the front porch today. Yes. I, Sioux Falls, I started my morning as your mayor, and I love it. I'm going to miss it. I'm, I'm in the, uh, uh, the Kiwanis Pancake House, and I'm in there. I'm shaking hands and, and uh, getting ready for an interview. And I come up to this guy, and I go, sir, hi, I'm, I'm Mayor Mike, and, and who, can I ask your name, please? And he goes, I'm Sherwin Linton. And I go... No, no. I thought he was joking. He goes, no, no. He goes, Mayor, I'm Sherwin Linton and his bride, Pam. Uh, and I, I am, I just, I got a little choked up thinking of my dad who's gone. And, and so your dad, grandpa, yep. loves Lawrence Welk. Yep. My dad was a Sherwin Linton fan who's gone. South Dakota staple there. Yeah. He's right up in Watertown, Sherwin came out of and everything. Been doing this like since the 50s or 60s, yes. I guess. Yes. Yep, he's yeah. a South Dakota favorite. He's at the Huron State Fair every year and everything. Yep. Folks, why wouldn't you come to the fair, whether it's the Sioux Empire Fair, uh, whether it's the, uh, the state fair in Huron, whether it's all these county fairs. Um, I'll tell you, it brings us back to our childhood, number one. Uh, you, get a, you get to meet you know, nice people from the West River uh, or from Colorado, uh, and you get to eat some great food and, and just create some memories with your kids and your friends. Exactly. Bonnie? And we are known as the Chuck Wagon. We have two spots out here at the fair. Got one under the grandstand. Oh, oh I, I, now I got Bonnie selling too. I got Boreon selling. I got Bonnie selling. I got all. Oh, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, George, nice to meet you too. Bonnie, thank you. Thank you as well. Yes, we talked rattlesnake brats and the listening and learning session. Am I blessed or what? Sioux Falls, uh, was that fun? Right? Talking rattlesnake brats at the fair, but talking about fun, I got, I got two dads. Uh, they're from Brookings, and they got their beautiful kids with them. Uh, did you guys just come down today? I was down on Monday. Okay. Came back. A lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, first time for the week, for the week for us. So, what do you mean the week? You're here for the week. No, no, we just came down for the day. For the day. Okay, yeah. great, great. Well, why, um, why Sioux Falls? Why the fair? Uh, why are you spending your money in, in our town? Because we're blessed by it. Uh, I actually grew up down here, not that far away, so I remember just a lot of childhood time that I spent here and wanted to bring the kids down and give them a little something before we go back to school here. So, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And? I remember uh, going to the fair when I was a kid. 
and uh, not necessarily here, but uh, I want my daughter to have that experience. And you guys have a nice one here. So Thank you. here we are. I Try to come down several times. Well, I, I love it. You're both from Brookings. Yeah. Um, in my mind, Brookings is one of the cities that, uh, you know, Sioux Falls is rocking, but I think Brookings is rocking too. A lot of good things going there, a lot of growth, uh, good things happening. What, what are you guys doing in Brookings? Uh, I work for Dactronics, uh, I'm an engineering up there. Yes. So. And of course, we've been impacted positively with Dactronics growth here in Sioux Falls too. Yes, we have uh, quite a few of our uh, engineering project management, just various staff down here. We've got a manufacturing plant in town, so yeah, it's been a, it's been a good growth down here as well. So. Great, great. And, and I work at Dac as well. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, can I ask uh, the family, so what do you want to do when you're at the fair? You're hanging out with dad uh, and friends, but what do you want to do? What's your number one wish at, the, at our Sioux Empire Fair? I want to have fun. <laughs> That's a pretty generic answer, and I'm all for that. Uh, and how about you? Staying with her. Stay, okay, you guys are here to have some fun. Come on, do you want to eat anything? Um, yes. What would you like to eat here at the fair? Mm. It's also good, I know. Chicken. Chicken. Do they, do we, you know, we have rattlesnake here. We have buffalo here. Uh, we have corn dogs here. Chicken. Uh, I don't know if we have chicken here. I'm sure we do. You'll find it. You'll find it. But, yeah, thank you. Snow cones. I know we have snow cones, too. But, again, welcome to the fair. Thanks for coming here today. Uh, we appreciate it. When do you guys go back to school? Uh, couple weeks 20 second okay all right well enjoy your time off and I'm a dad proud of you dad proud of you enjoy the fair thank you Sioux Falls you know one of the things that we oftentimes take for granted and we never should is is uh, you know feeling safe um, and you know at a, at a fair when you've got uh, upwards of 15,000 people last night at, at, at a show uh, to, to countless of thousands others uh, this, this safety gig is is real. Uh, I'm blessed uh, to hang out with uh, this man who is serving our city, state uh, very, very well. Tell us your name and tell us what you do. Preston Evans. I'm a sergeant with the Minneapolis County Sheriff's Department. And uh, uh, Preston has been serving a, a long time. Very long. Yes. Um, got 20, give us your background. I'm 26 years in at the Sheriff's Department, 28 years with Minneapolis County. Thank I'm you. Originally from Cleveland, Ohio, came here for college, and the rest is history. <laughs> Thanks for. Uh, tell us about, uh, and you don't have to tell us everything, but how do you keep uh, this fair safe? Uh, these fair. What? I mean, what's going on behind the scenes that that maybe the people who falls don't know? Uh, you know, what do you do? Well, our main purpose here is to make sure that people can come enjoy the activities and uh, be uh, risk-free. Yes. Um, we're managing the midway. Um, there is some preparation that goes into that uh, beforehand uh, just to make sure that you know everyone can come here and have a good time and um, walk the midway, enjoy some of the fair food uh, without having any problems. When there is a problem, and I'm sure you know somebody's gonna probably drink too much or, or maybe someone's fighting over a girl or what it would be, um, then how do you how do you how do you manage that? Is uh, is there a place that you can take them, or do you take them down to the jail? What do you do? Well, well right now on the fairgrounds we have a uh, sheriff's trailer uh, where we will take people for anything that's law enforcement related. If it's something medical related, uh, we have an EMS uh, house here also. We take them there for that. Um, we have a lot of officers here that's doing uh, security undercover. Um, some of them are in uniform. Very good. Um, most of the time, what we find is that uh, our presence here just kind of handle things for the most part. Uh, the weather dictates a lot of what's going on too. It's been pretty nice weather, so we've been pretty fortunate. We haven't had a lot of problems, but obviously, when you get that bigger number of people, you're going to have uh, a few issues. But it hasn't been anything that we can't handle. You know, Sioux Falls. That was interesting, and I was not expecting that with uh, uh, with this interview. But I, I mean, you heard it. Not only is it uh, women and men in uniform, uh, but there are women and men out of uniform, but they're still protecting yep. 
uh, the patrons of the fair uh, undercover. Undercover. And so they'll be in plain clothes. Uh, they'll be uh, infiltrated in some of those areas where there's a, a big number of people, for instance, in the uh, concerts and different things like that. Just kind of our eyes and ears. Uh, if it's things get out of hand, then, of course, we have radio traffic. We have cell phones. They can give us a call. And then we got enough people that uh, once we get a location, we can get in there and get things taken care of. But as of right now, uh, today is Wednesday. We haven't had a problem at all. It's been the, the, the weather um, is dictated kind of what t transpires, and, and it's been pretty nice weather, and we've been pretty fortunate so far. I, I, I love it. Uh, any, um, uh, anything else that you could coach or teach the people of Sioux Falls on when it comes to providing security at the, at the fair that people just don't know about? Right. There's a lot of things in the background that goes on, and um, you know, some of it we, we like people to know. The, the biggest thing is that you can come out to uh, events like this and you're going to be safe. I mean, we got preparation, we got uh, cameras, we got everything. You know, we, we know what's going on. Um, 911 can get a hold of us. We got dispatchers out, tactical dispatchers that's out here. Um, so the biggest thing is that uh, come to the fair, enjoy the fair, uh, do the same thing that uh, we were doing 30, 40 years ago. Good, clean Sioux Falls fun uh, for the uh, Sioux Empire Fair. Well, uh, I could not have said that any better, because uh, I, I think there is a perception out there, uh, especially amongst uh, you know the grandmas and the grandpas out there that that oh, if we could only have the good old days back, because then we'd feel safe and secure. Uh, this man knows safety as as much as anybody in in our great city, and he just said it's as safe. Absolutely. clean and fun as it was 30 you know, 40 years ago I, I believe that um, you know we got a the population's increased yes um, and we got some challenges now that we didn't have a, yes. a while ago however um, this is still a safe place to live this is still a good clean fair this is a good a family fair um, I encourage everyone that if you haven't been out bring your family out you're gonna have a good time folks uh, you know I often talk about the impact of ag on the city of Sioux Falls, and we just cannot take it for granted. Well, I grabbed uh, a couple folks from out of town. Uh, they are in the agriculture business. Uh, they're farmers, ranchers, um, uh, in, and you're from Mount Vernon. Mount, Montrose. Montrose. They're from Montrose. So, would you mind just introducing yourself to the people of Sioux Falls? Laverne Rapp. Mr. Yeah. Rapp? Yep. Laverne and Mrs. Rapp? Carol. Carol. Thank you, Carol. And their son? Jeff. Their son, Jeff. So, um, uh, Jeff uh, and Mr. Rep, uh, is it row crops? Is it? Uh, do you have livestock? What, what do you hit? What do you do? Well, he has livestock. There's cattle there and row crops. Okay. okay. And yeah, you uh, are, are you part of the, the farm too? Yeah, I mostly run it. They're pretty well retired. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. cow calf operation and corn and soybeans. Explain to the people of Sioux Falls, uh, because I mean I get it. Uh, I come from an egg background from Hudson County. But explain to the people of Sioux Falls uh, just how important it is to have a, a good crop, to have good prices for your livestock, and how that reflects in how you spend your money here in Sioux Falls. Oh, it makes a lot of difference on everything going around, I guess, machinery-wise to, I mean, just food supply, everything. <laughs> I, I don't, his, how's Montrose doing for precept this year? They've been short. Sorry. Yeah, it's... Probably drop 50 bushels at least on the corn. And so the the farmers around Montrose, with the limited precip, the odds are good they're going to spend less money. Is that right? That's for sure because the price of the commodity is also down compared to other years. So there's going to be a big difference. Not as much machinery buying. <laughs> and uh, do you ever buy uh, machineries, machinery or, or trucks? or whatever would be uh, uh, goods, services in Sioux Falls? Do you, do you folks do that? A lot of shopping in Sioux Falls, yes. Will, will you cut back uh, if, the, if the farm economy isn't good? Probably, yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Well, <laughs> well I, I try to get people to understand that, you know, when we have these events in Sioux Falls, that most of the people that come to the events are from out of town. And uh, if they spend money in our town, it, it impacts us in a big way, but also the state of South Dakota. Uh, I mean, you're running the operation uh, uh, for, the, for the most part. I mean, how are you feeling? Um, it, certainly, uh, um, commodity prices are not where you want them to be. Uh, you're not getting the rain you want. Um, are you going to cut back in your spending? Oh, yeah, we'll cut back so much. 
hard to tell right now how things are going to turn out, I guess. We got the whole month of August for bean crop yet, I guess, but we know the corn crop will be a little short, so spending will be definitely cut back some. Have you, have you been to the event center yet? The premier center? Yes. Oh, <laughs> I did not know what the answer was. I never do. So I got Montrose people coming to the premier center. Uh, uh, Mrs. Rapp, why are you coming to the premier center? What did you see? Well, mostly ball games. As Basketball? Well. Yes. Summit League? Yes. Okay. Are you a Jackrabbit fan or a USD fan? You bet, Jackrabbit. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm an 84 graduate and I married in 86. Okay. Uh, so, okay, we're, we're okay. Uh, so, basketball for you? Yes. Okay, very good. M Mr. Rapp, the same? Yep, same way. Okay. Our, our son has season tickets for different events there. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, older son. Okay. <laughs> Have you been to any concerts? Not at the Premier Center, no. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. And uh, have you been to the Premier Center? Yes, I've been to some concerts and rodeos and oh, good. <laughs> good. ball games. This is the guy we want. Uh, so I love it. I love it. And uh, again, six out of every ten people that come to the Premier Center, they are from out of town. They're like you. Um, a bull riding. Uh, uh, a country concert, a basketball game. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Very enjoyable compared to the old arena. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one took about 10 years off my life getting that one built. Uh, but it's all been worth it. And uh, again, I, I told you I would I just only talk to you a limited time, but I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Mrs. Rapp, thank you. Uh, Mr. Rapp, thank you so much. I got to get to Montrose. You bet. Yeah. Come and visit. Thank you. Thank you. How's Montrose doing? Well, some of our businesses are closing there. Going backwards, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Our general yeah. store is closing and our one of our cafes is closing also. So then it makes it harder to find a place for the senior meals to be. A, so Sioux Falls, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. You, you got to understand. We need uh, Montrose and Trip and Volga and Wesson and Springs. We need all these towns across South Dakota to, to do well. Uh, because when they do well, it impacts Sioux Falls in a big way too. And, and so again, thank you for being in Sioux Falls today. We, we appreciate it. And, and uh, I hope you get that rain so those uh, bean pods uh, pop for you here in the next 30 days. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bless you. Sioux Falls, I, I bothered some really nice people. You know that's my style. Uh, they're eating ice cream, hanging out, and then the mayor comes up and bothers these people from Garrison. Mr. Hagee, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, who are these people here? Well, this is my granddaughter, and that's our daughter, and that's my wife over there. Uh, Kelsey, Karen, and Janet. Thank you. And Kelsey and Karen, where do you live? I live in Omaha. Omaha. Just north of Sioux Falls. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go to the Omaha girl first. Uh, any chance we can get you to move to, to Sioux Falls? It's possible. It's in the works. Oh. Oh. Uh, did you know that, Dad? I don't know what she did say. Oh, well, she said <laughs> uh, she may move back to Sioux Falls oh, someday. Oh, yeah. Well, she would like to be towards home. Towards mom and dad. Yeah. And sister. And well, until Grandma and Grandpa, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she came up for was the big sandwich day. Oh, oh very good. See, she's been with us since I think it was five years old or whatever. And she's been here every year except the years that she could not be, okay. be here if possible. Love it. So, uh, Can I ask, uh, what um, what will it take to, to get you to move back to Sioux Falls? We've got uh, the lowest unemployment rate in America right now, uh, 5,000 job openings, uh, the highest quality of life in the entire uh, country, uh, a lot of great things going on, and you got mom and dad, grandma and grandpa here. What, what, what would it take? A job. <laughs> Tell us, what do you do? I work for Good Samaritan Society. Oh, gosh. So I work in Scribner, Nebraska right now with them. I think we'll get you a job, and, and we'd love to have you move back. I do want to talk to your dad, though, and, and your mom. Uh, so, Mr. Hagee, uh, you're in Garrison. Well, I live out the, by the Arrows Data Center. Oh, you do? Okay. Okay. I live out there in the farm. I, and are, are you a, a farmer? Well, yeah, I was before I kind of, the last couple of years, I haven't did anything. But. Okay. 
I said, my son is farming the ground, but he's got some livestock, so I kind of look after them for him. Can I ask you a favor, Mr. Hagee? I'm trying to uh, coach the people of Sioux Falls, just the, the importance of agriculture on the big city, you know, all these city slickers living here. Help them understand just how important agriculture is on, on a city like Sioux Falls. Well, if we don't have agriculture, they will not be able to live. They got to have food, and that's where it's got to come from with the farmers out there. And if the farmers can't get a decent price, they're going to go, and there ain't going to be no food or work for anybody. At least that's my feelings. Did you do row crops and livestock? Yes, I did, and I married dairied till 1996. Oh. Mrs. Mrs. Hagee, you didn't tell me you were a, a bride of a dairy of a dairy producer. Oh, that is, uh, folks. One of the most challenging roles in all of agriculture is uh, is dairy. Uh, uh, but it sounds like you've you've done well. Well, <laughs> I guess so. I mean, at least we're doing okay, yeah. and I got my farm paid for. So oh, very good. Your son took over the, the, the farm, the uh, uh, operation? He's doing the mil uh, chores, I okay. mean the farming part. Oh, so you are still in, in uh, dairy? Well, no, okay. not one. I sold out the dairy in 96, okay. and, and the dairy herd left just before we had the ice storm in 96. Okay. So we were out of electricity for quite a while. Ooh, okay. <laughs> very good, very good. No. I uh, think, how, uh, tell us, about, how, how's Gerritsen doing? Well, it looks like the town is doing all right. Yeah. They're building new yeah. houses and, yeah. and everything seems to be doing just fine. They build onto the school and that's yeah. been going good. One of the things who falls that's happening is that, you know, we are doing well, but we've got these communities all around us like Gerritsen uh, where people are, are choosing to live and then they'll, they'll work and play in, in Sioux Falls, so I, I love it, I love it. Well, that's just about what Gerritsen is, it's kind of a bed, uh, Bedroom uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, they got the grocery store and their elevator and uh, the gas stations, and they got some shops there. Very good. Do you do most of your shopping in Sioux Falls? Uh, and may I should ask Mrs. Hagee? Yeah, all right, all right, all right, here we go. All right, Mrs. Hagee, here we go, here we go. So, do you do um, uh, a lot of shopping in, in Sioux Falls? Well, a fair amount, fair amount. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Uh, do you go to the mall or do you go, where do you go? I haven't been to the mall for a long time. <laughs> I go on the east side, that new one. Oh yes, Dolly Farms. Yeah, okay. I've been going, I've gone there quite a bit now. Uh, Mrs. Hagee, I don't go to the mall very much either, I, I, and I'm the mayor. Uh, so. Uh, but well, very good. So you go to Delhi Farms. So you you like the way that that's growing out there? Yeah, I like it over there. Uh -huh. It's easy to get there from from where we live. And very good. Now, Gerson, you're getting some rain, aren't you? You've been getting some rain, haven't you? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hagee just said that they got an inch of rain last night, but otherwise you shook your head. It's been dry there too. All right. All right. Um, as a uh, bride uh, who's just in the middle of, of, a, of a farm family, uh, precipitation's pretty dang important, isn't it? Yes, it is. If you don't get rain, you don't get a crop. What's the driest uh, summer that you remember? Uh, what was that year? Seth. 76, yeah, we had really done with everything in July, weren't we? Okay. Yeah. That, was, that was the year I had to borrow money to pay my landlord. Mr. Mr. Hagee just said that uh, that was the year he had, uh, 1976, he had to borrow money to make his land payments. Talk about frightening. Yeah, that had to, that's, that's, yeah. How, in your mind, how does this drought compare with 76? Uh, not, not, not nearly as bad? It's not as bad. Okay. No. But still worries you. Well, yeah, I yeah. keep going, but now this helped yeah, a little yeah. bit. Okay, mm -hmm. 
Well, I thank you. Mr. Hagee's done with his ice cream, uh, even with the interview. Uh, and, and I really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your family, your mom and dad with us, uh, Sioux Falls. I, I, I love it. And, and I wish you the best, Mr. Hagee. Mrs. Hagee, thank you. And thank you. I, I didn't get to interview you very much, but you already live here. I love it. I love it. Uh, maybe a tough one. If there was one thing that we could do to make Sioux Falls better, I'm going to put you on the spot. And don't worry. I, I ask this question all the time, and people are honest, so be honest. If there was one thing that we could do to improve Sioux Falls, what would it be? Oh, I don't know. Um, improve our internet service. <laughs> now, really? Explain that. I, I've never. Explain that. Well, we live outside city limits, and we have very poor internet service. Very slow. Uh, okay. Uh, are you so you're not part of the city? You're no, we're outside city limits. Okay. Very good, very good. You know, the internet is just something we always take, we just kind of take it for granted that internet service, but now where you're at. No. All right, all right. Well, thank you, thank you. And, and uh, last but not least, we want you back. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I got is a thank you. Uh, but thank you so much for letting me interview you today. Thank you. All right, Sioux Falls, uh, we've been focusing quite a bit uh, on the impact of agriculture on the city of Sioux Falls, and I've got Stacy from Litchfield, Minnesota. Yep. Very good. Welcome, Stacy. Thank you. So what are you doing, and what do you got in your hand here? I work for Pipestone Systems out of okay. Pipestone, Minnesota. They have some barns up by Litchfield, so I run the farrowing department up there. Very good. And, um, you know, we talk about we need Sioux Falls to do well and we need the South Dakota to do well but we also need these small towns all around Sioux Falls whether they're from Minnesota, Iowa, uh, wherever we be, we need them to do well too. Absolutely. Do you come into our town very often? Um, I grew up around Sioux Falls Watertown area okay. so I'm here quite a bit my family still lives in Del Rapids so. Thank you. So what, what are you teaching the, the people of, of that they come to the fair. Uh, these piglets were born when? The ones here in the middle were born just this morning. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, what, which one, right here? No, nope, these. These here. Okay, these piglets were born this morning. Uh, I love it. Uh, oh, I love my job. Yeah. I get to play with animals all day long, so. Okay. Uh, were, they, uh, were there any people, any uh, fair patrons here to see the birth? Um, I don't think so. It was kind of overnight early this morning, but they did videotape it okay. so you can watch piglets being born. Okay. But, but it, I mean, this is fantastic. This is one of, the, uh, one of the new things we've got going on at the Sioux Empire Fair. We're trying to, you know, celebrate ag at the big way. We're also trying to teach people about agriculture and what a great way to do it uh, with one day old piglets uh, right here uh, at, at the fairgrounds. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm here just to answer any questions for people that are wondering how the pigs are raised and from us to nurseries and finishers and then to the table, Thank so. You. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, uh, the, the, these products just don't show up at the supermarket. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Nope. I, I help raise the pigs and help the mom give births if they're having trouble, and then they go off to the nursery. So, Sioux Falls, there are things that we take for granted in life. Uh, many times we really take for granted this you know, wonderful food uh, that is in our supermarkets here in Sioux Falls and across the, the world, but it doesn't happen on its own. There are farmers or ranchers, small towns, big towns, all across that are making this happen for our great city and, and people. And, and so thank you for letting me interview you here today. Thank you. It's a great day in August. Uh, I don't know if it could be much better for fair going. And I've just really enjoyed this uh, listening learning session with all of uh, these, these great people from all around us. And, and yep, there was probably a, a hidden intent here today. We wanted to teach people about agriculture uh, and the impact and, and these old hokey things like a fair and how they truly, truly do impact our, our great city, not only economically, but also quality of life wise. And, and uh, so again, thank you for being with me here today. I truly, truly appreciate it. And, and behind the cameras, Brad, um, it's not as hot as it was last year when we did it, 
but it's still a lot of work for him too. So Bradley, thank you. Sioux Falls, thank you. And make it a great, great day. And yes, pray for rain. Take care, Sioux Falls.